welcome to The Effects Loop. I'm your host, Jay Byrne. Today's episode is going to be about a brand new audio plugin. It's for digital audio workstations for your DAW, and it is from the Nembrini Audio. <laughs> it's hard to say, Nembrini. Nembrini Audio, um, and the plugin is the MP1 Pro. Now this plugin is based after the legendary classic ADA MP1 rack mount unit that was used on like every freaking metal album in the 80s. So here I am sitting on the couch. So if I'm sitting on the couch, you know you're getting a history lesson, but that's how it works. So we got um, the Nimbrini Audio. You, you, there's noise coming from upstairs. I don't know what they're doing up there. They're either destroying floors or vacuuming everything under the sun. So you might hear a little bit of buzzing in the sound. So the Numbrini Audio MP1 plugin for DAW that just came out was based after the ADA MP1, which came out around 86, 87. Okay. Now, that was a rack mount unit that had a tube in it, uh, one or two tubes. I know there's a mod where some people put more tubes in it. Um, however, it, it was two. It did have a tube in it, at least. But it was just a rack mount unit. Back in the 80s, rack mounts were really popular. It is definitely most notably known for being used on, specifically, by a producer named Michael Wagner, okay? He had a specific setting that he used, and like every guitar player that used it used that setting. And I mean, it is on White Lion's Pride album. That is Vito's sound on that album. It was Nuno's sound on Pornography, which is a great tone. And it was also used on the first Skid Row album. Like, that's the tone on the entire first Skid Row album. Those three specific albums I know for certain this was used on, but it was used on so many things. Between 86 and like the early 90s, it was used on so much during the rack mount era. So that's what the Numbrini MP1 is based on. It's based on like a 1987 ADA MP1. So there you go. When you turn on the plugin, this is the sound that you get right out of the gate. This is what you get. I am actually using my uh, Les Paul right now. I'm using my um, my Epiphone Les Paul Custom, the white one. So this is what comes, this is what it sounds like right out of the gate. Not a bad sound at all, actually. Pretty good. Uh, totally usable. That's the stock settings with what you're seeing right here. Okay, so these are the things that you got here. You got Overdrive 1, Overdrive 2, Master Gain, Bass, Mid, Treble, Presence, Voicing, because you can do Tube and you can do Solid State. I haven't messed with the Solid State too much because it defaults to the Tube. And Effect. If this Effect button here is on, then you are utilizing your little block of effects over here, which we will get into in a little bit. Down here, you've got your your cabinet, your impulses. Um, I don't have any impulses in. I'm just using the stock, what comes with it. So what you're hearing is what you get if you actually buy this program. Um, and right here, this is actually the same thing that was on the other screen. It's just what's in the corner over there, that little mixer in the corner. When you click the mixer, looks to me like it's exa yeah, it's exactly the same. It just it just changes the view on the screen. These are the mics right now that it comes set up with. I think there's more mics even available, isn't there? Uh yeah, what do we got? Yeah, ribbon, condenser, dynamic 421, dynamic 57. Okay, so it gives you like four mics there. So this is the setup that they give you when it first comes. It also gives you some cabinets. I tend to like this VH412 V30. This is supposed to be like a VHT um, 412 with V30s. You also get, uh, it's a greenback right there, like a Marshall cabinet, uh, a rectifier, a dual rectifier, 412 of Vincent V30s. A couple different ones here. I'm not sure exactly what that is. I think it's a Hughes and Kettner H key. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what that is. Um, these are 212. 
BG, maybe Bogner. I don't know. Yeah, it kind of looks like a Bogner. You just put Bogner there, then it would actually be Bogner. Um, yeah, and then you back up to this again. This is I, I tend to like this one tends to work the best right here. Uh, I don't know, I just like the way it sounds for me personally. Um, so, and then on the side, you've got your input and your output volume. This is what it comes automatically set to. Seems to be okay for me, so I'm not going to mess with that. Right here is the power amp. So this essentially is like your tube section. So you can set your volume, your resonance, and your presence. You know, you can give it a little bit, you can, you can affect the coloration of the sound by messing with those basically all right this overdrive and overdrive 2 these two they kind of work in conjunction with each other they're not separate sounds so you can set overdrive 1 i can set it around 4 and overdrive 2 maybe around 5 that seems to be good you know you're giving it a little bit of a kick i mean if you want like a heavier gain sound master gain you can leave that at what it is, if unless you want to start messing with it, um, bass. You know what? I actually found that you can crank up the bass just a little bit. These are the settings that I actually saw from a video that I watched online. Uh, Leon Todd was the uh, guitarist that did the video that I was watching about this, and these are the settings that he most mostly the settings that he was using. Mid, you can scoop the mids a little bit more down to negative six, and treble uh treble's okay on two presence this is where this thing really shines give it some brightness and it sounds really cool um so yeah so there we go so now we got this set up and i'm gonna bring this down just a tad so we're hearing more i'm gonna leave it on because it adds a little bit of like oomph to it i guess you could say but i'm gonna bring it down just so we can get a little bit uh more of the um the SM, the 57. But this is the, the I changed that song. That's a good tone right there. As of Thursday, February 16th, this is uh, 29 dollars 99 It's like 36 bucks with tax. Okay, the regular price on this is $137, which is a little crazy. But I noticed that most of their stuff goes right back to what it originally cost eventually, because all their other plugins are like $137. And they got some cool stuff, but it's like a, they're like $137. I'm sure they do sales, and you can get sales every now and then. But generally speaking, it's going to cost you $137 if you miss the sale on this. Right now it's $30. Bucks. It's definitely worth it for $30. Bucks. I mean, just to get that sound. Yeah, okay, let's um, let's mess with the. Um, this is your effects section over here. So mod. You click your little power thing here, and it turns your mod modulation on. Now, I mean, just listen to this. This is like so eighties. <laughs> I mean, that is so, like, I mean, that's, like, right out of, like, what, White Lion? And what you're hearing is the actual recorded sound, so, I mean, I'm not going to do any, like, post-processing to it or anything like that, but you're hearing the actual sound that you get recording direct with this thing so that's pretty cool if you think about it but yeah so there's your mod i mean you get your basic settings for modulation rate depth there's actually a tremolo which i haven't even tried let's see what does the tremolo actually do what's the default setting on here? Thank you. 
I get you can set that with a heavier depth if you'd like to, but I got the, uh, it's just the default right now. Is what I got on. So we shut this off. Um, if you want a delay, this delay is actually really cool. It's very 80s, um, but you'll hear what this is. <laughs> Let's get some cool trails. Like the headphones are right now. It's kind of neat. But it's actually a very cool delay. Like the effects that are included in this are actually quite good. Um, we'll shut that off for now because it's a little bit obnoxious when it's on. You get a reverb, which is actually on right now. I think it's just giving like a very subtle reverb. I'm not really sure. What are we, is this on? It's um, If you crank up this reverb, what, what do we get here? What kind of reverb this actually is? <laughs> So it's like almost like a room reverb. Yeah. So it's, it's like a room reverb, really. It, uh, room, almost like a plate or a room type of thing. Oh, I'll get this back down to like where it was there. Just, just barely on. So you get a little bit of like... It's a little bit of ambience there. There's not much of anything. But, um, so there's your reverb. Um, it comes with a compressor. I don't really use compressor that much, but if you put the compressor on, this is what the compressor setting is right out of the box. The compressor, I mean, it squashes the sound because that's what a compressor does. But I actually like the... I think it sounds better without that compressor on, but this filter right here is kind of interesting. This is a, like a, it, it helps your attack, really. See, if you do this tight, if I put the tight all the way down, it sounds flubby, it sounds like an amp. So it's almost like emulating, like running like a SD1 or something through it. So if we turn it up really high, you're gonna get like a, like a really like, it's kind of harsh um but that's everything that's on the screen here it does come with its own built-in um presets here okay there's factory presets now i messed around with some of these I, i'm not 100 percent sure what to make of this <laughs> Actually, doesn't sound half bad. Um, all different ones here. Guitar Hero. What's this sound like? That's not bad. Metallica. What does Metallica sound like? <laughs> Let's see. Does this actually sound like Metallica? That's not bad. That Metallica preset's not that bad, actually. One thing this thing does is it metals. So. I'm using a Squire Classic Vibe 50 Strat right now. All stock, except for the saddles that I changed. Um, this is the pickups that come with it. So 
is not bad at all. Let me click over to my... Uh... It's a bit crazy on the distortion there. Let's go to that clean... Uh... Ah, not that. Voicing. Let's go to the clean one and see if we can get something out of it. I'm gonna get really funky, put some delay and put some modulation on there. Then we'll get that. You can add only three IRs, which is not that much. It allows you to put three IRs in it. But I mean, if you have specific IRs that you know, like your own cabinets that you use, then that's fine. You can use those. Um, like I said, I like um, the cabinets that come with it. I didn't ever really went through all the different ones here. I mean, I guess I could. Uh, I could show you just quickly. <laughs> So that is that, and I will show you what the different cabinets sound like just quickly. Uh, let's go to a, a greenback here. This is a greenback. We'll just play the same thing. Greenback. Here's the recto. Let's see what else we got here. Whatever this is, the 212H using Kettner or whatever. Don't like that one so much, but what this one is, Bogner 212 or Vision 30. Those, the 212 tend to be a little harsh. This is a... There you have it. If you like this kind of content, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that when there's a new video, you know about it. Typically speaking, I'm gonna have videos on Wednesdays from now on. A uh, good video on Wednesday, maybe some random stuff on Friday or something like that if I feel like doing it or if something comes up. Um, so that's why it'll be good to uh, hit the notification bell as well because if you're interested in these videos, there might be some random ones popping up here and there. Uh, but there will always be a Wednesday video. So there you go. Well, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. I hope this video did something for you. Uh, Jay Byrne, this has been the Effects Loop. Take care. See you next time.